Welcome to NRF 2024. I'm Kieran Powell, Executive Vice President of Channel V Media, and I'm joined by Jessica Bins, top retail expert. Jessica, welcome. Thank you so much. Jessica has spent the last 10 plus years trying to figure out what's next in retail and what retailers should be doing and what strategies retailers should be implementing. This year, retail has experienced a fundamentally faster shift than most years. There's been disruption in the capital markets. There's been new technologies which are radically changing retail. Over the last couple of days, what have you seen at the show that you think retailers need to implement? It really is the AI show. Let's be let's be honest here. Uh, AI was everywhere, and every time I heard AI, I thought, are we hearing AI washing? Where it's, you know, is it really AI? Is it just AI because everyone cares about AI right now? It's hard to say, but that was really one of the big trends is AI has been around for a long time, yeah. but it does feel like the technology is evolving more quickly. We do have to be careful to not conflate AI with Gen AI or Gen AI. Yeah. Two very different things. AI has been here forever. That's you know your personalized emails. That's that's AI in the background. But it's Gen AI that's getting people excited because of the capabilities that it offers. One of the interesting companies I spoke with was Coveo. They're into AI personalized search. They were very strong about saying we've been doing AI for so long that they really do believe in the power of their platform and how that delivers actual results for, for consumers and for brands alike. They're delivering the most relevant products that people are looking for, and they can also de de deliver in adjacent categories and, and create that uplift that brands are always looking for. So that was kind of one of the interesting companies that had something that I think every retailer and e-tailer really needs right now. What we do at Coveo is we ground that generative AI, the LLM as we call them, the large language model, into the customer content. So we will use, in this case, rich content as well as product content, and we will ground the LLM. By grounding, what we mean is we will tell the LLM that there is really a defined boundaries that it cannot go beyond. So we cannot hallucinate like ChatGPT does, where it goes, you know, and it, it grabs content from everywhere. And then, you know, the answer you receive is not absolutely accurate. Uh, we make sure that what we receive is accurate, is based on the knowledge that you've produced, and we summarize it and use it for education. And then you can see there at the bottom, some of the products so we then use that knowledge to recommend products that it, that are also from uh, the catalog of our, of our customers. So everyone's talking about generative AI. Can you tell me a little bit about vision AI? Sure. Vision AI is the ability to take whatever's happening visually and turn it into actionable data. It's not just a streaming video, but what's happening? What's on shelf? Who's there? How long are they looking at it? That's what vision AI is. How do I turn visible activities into actionable data? With Vision AI, what are you hearing from retailers? What, what kind of like trends are they seeing that Vision AI is able to help them with? Good question. So lots of things are happening in retail. Shortages of staff, inconsistent amount of time to be dedicated to doing something maybe innovative. So what we're trying to do is supply them with solutions and inventory, on-shelf availability, queue management. Hey, how many people are in line? Can I eliminate that? Can I bring somebody out? We're trying to give them kind of eyes that works with AI, right? Yeah. So we're given the visual aspect of it. So we can help as a platform enable those capabilities. So what else are you seeing with physical stores? What are the, what are the problems that really are kind of bubbling up. I feel like the store has been under attack for a long time. Once e-commerce entered the equation, suddenly the stores were like, oh, what's, what's our role? What's our purpose? And uh, someone said that there's been this focus on making stores the most almost functional part of a logistics network. Is that really the best and highest use of a store? Yeah. It really should be a brand experience center. And another um, expert was talking about really making the store an influencer. Yeah, I think uh, when I think about retail trends, customer experience is really in the center, and then everything else is a nice to have. Yes. 
The physical store's also not gonna go away. Over 70% of transactions still happens at a physical store. We're seeing current reports and trends that's coming out to say that, you know, again, kind of the Gen Z's, X's, you know, any letter of the alphabet, is still wanting to be able to come into the store to be able to have that experience. If I look at our story that we've brought to NRF around beacon lighting, it's very much fundamentally part of that. You know, it's how to be able to reinvent that in-store experience through a digital connection and or a digital engagement point but also being able to expand the range as well. So think of Beacon as an example, being able to bring in their marketplace data, being able to do their in-store inventory, being able to do their online inventory, but all being able to have that at a central point within the store because you know, electrical lighting, that type of a retailer is still a physical experience. They want to be able to look, touch, feel, but also take that journey away if they want to be able to do and then close the transaction at home um, as well. It's a, it's a fundamental part of what we see as the value that Touch is bringing is to be able to you know, enable a little bit of that closed loop experience, um, but also to be able to expand the range and the opportunities that retailers can have as well. So we've heard a little a bit about your success with Beacon Lighting. Do you want to come and show me the demo? So we have over here the platform that is deployed inside of one of Beacon's stores and allows various uh, customers to come in and identify their needs, search for products. It's an in-store experience that extends what they may be finding in the, uh, on their website, um, but then allows uh, the customers to also uh, model what they're looking for in their homes and then continue the transaction through a uh, um, checkout process. But the nice thing here is that uh, there's an AI component to this where if somebody's trying to remodel their uh, bathroom, as an example, um, they're able to use context around what they like, what they don't like, the kind of environment they're in, and then have recommendations coming back on what that design can look like. I think every consumer out there today is really looking for instant gratification. When they come into a store, they certainly want to be able to get the products on their list, and they want to be able to find them easily. So at Simbi, we provide automated store intelligence solutions. We help retailers to ensure their products are stocked in the right place, have the right price. Our primary product is Talik, which you see here, which is a fully autonomous mobile robot platform uh, that operates in large format retail stores. It goes up and down the store aisles. It captures high quality 2D and 3D image data, which we process with our proprietary computer vision and AI. And then we provide critical insights to the retailer uh, to help them optimize restocking, reordering, uh, really how to maximize that customer experience. So when consumers come in, they really get the products they're looking for. When you think about the trends coming out of the NRF, what are you seeing in like instant gratification? Yeah, so I think uh, definitely to facilitate the checkout experience, right, uh, is something big. I mean, you've got so many big brands here that are, you know, helping customers check out faster. AI is helping make recommendations that increase sales. And this is the new Pi, and it's powered by the Qualcomm, the new Qualcomm chip, which just makes it super fast. Yeah, yeah, the chipset uh, 6490. So what can this do that others can't? To be specific, uh, in FNB, for instance, it's a check-in, check-out, uh, self-ordering system. It's got facial recognition and biometric recognition as well. It can be applied in the case of being a beauty assistant, you know, uh, making recommendations again, letting you try stuff on. And last, I think, you know, in retail stores, right? It makes very intelligent recommendations. Uh, it's almost as if it knows you. It's an intelligent sales assistant, right? that helps the customer. With the advent of uh, digital and the focus on the e-commerce side of the house, we think that the store space has been a little bit left behind. And what occurred over the time with the pandemic, I think really pushed the stores and what we're asking of our store associates to do. So with uh, Build-A-Bear, uh, what we're trying to do is help them provide, have the checkout experience be as engaging as the building experience. I went and built a uh, T-Rex with my son and that whole process of picking the bear Stuffing it, putting in the heart is very immersive. It's very exciting for a child, but then when they get to check out, it's a bit of a downer. So the idea is how could we give them technology that was simple and seamless and really helped end the journey of building the bear on an upswing versus a downswing. So what else did you see on the show floor? What, what other conversations did you hear that kind of stuck out? As unsexy as it might be, RFID is still relevant. There's still so much that retailers can do with RFID, especially in the apparel space. 
Avery Dennison was speaking about this with uh, Amazon. They're doing just walk out stores in a bunch of stadiums around the, around the country. And that really is an unlock for experience, being able to literally take your product off a shelf, walk out, and it's all handled behind the scenes. Guess what's hot again? It's RFID. I mean, if you've been in retail for a couple years, Kieran, I think I've been in retail a few years longer than you have. Um, <laughs> RFID used to be really hot, and then it wasn't, but now it is again. In fact, if you walk around the show floor, I'm sure you'll see many use cases for RFID. In the example you have here in our Just Walk Out technology store, you see every item on the shelf here on the racks has an RFID tag on it. And so as you think about that experience, yeah. I walk yeah. in, I walk in, <laughs> I've grabbed my item, I've already validated when I enter the store, and then I walk out. And so the RFID tags basically allow you to check out without any sort of friction. Powerful, right? This is what we call physical store tech. And these are a couple of examples of what we're doing around it. What are what are the the table stakes strategies that retailers need to be implementing this year to capture those consumers? So I think certainly you need to have the the predictability of service, right? You need a, a rich experience that engages the consumer, right? And then that, that predictability of service, you only have a very short period of time to be able to deliver, right? So if, if, you, if you acquire these products from this retailer and there's something on the back end that doesn't come through, your product is delayed, there's damage to the product, uh, it's not the way it was represented online, there, there's a promise that, that a retailer has to, to make true to right to the consumer and they'll they'll lose them without it and if those broken promises happen that can cause a, a significant degradation in the performance of that retailer business and a very dissatisfied customer is going to break their loyalty immediately regardless of how much they may traditionally have loved the brand so so it's it's end to end it's the experience up front and then it's the delivery the service that they're satisfied with the product and how it was given to them ultimately and then how it how it feels how it looks how much did that match the experience of when they were interacting with the brands initially during the show we've heard about autonomous robots we've heard about computer vision and store we've heard about all these like different solutions like meta glasses yeah. going into store so what are some of the requirements that retailers need to be kind of putting into their store from an infrastructure perspective to help support what's coming down in the future? Yeah, I'm so glad that you asked because I think one of the coolest things about this show is that we're able to see where retail is going and a lot of retailers get to come in and see this technology, but then they go back and they have to look at their infrastructures and see what they've got in their stores from a hardware and software perspective, but also from a network perspective. So when you think about, do we have cradle points? Do we have the wiring? Do we have the cameras? Can our hardware support this really cool technology and software that we just saw at the show? A lot of times the answer is no. Um, and then beyond that, if they do have all of it, how are their sales associates gonna be able to support it? So I think it's a, it's a balance through, how do we get the customers into our store? How do we make this environment sticky? But how do we make it easy to support and then to add on a solution like Loss Prevention or like a demo with the Meta uh, Ray-Ban glasses so that you are future-proofed? Well, thank you so much, Jay, and thank you for helping drive retail forward. Absolutely. So happy to be here and great to see you, Karen. I think I think that's a wrap. Like and subscribe. <laughs>